Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I just want to say a huge congrats to the class of 2024. I'm sure you guys had a crazy high school experience and it's so awesome to have you guys join um, the UC Berkeley fam. A little video about the pros and cons about coming to UC Berkeley. I tried to make this as specific to the UC Berkeley campus. Just so you guys aren't sitting here and watching me talk about really generic things that can honestly be for any college. Uh, so let's get started. Okay, so number one, personally, I decided to come to UC Berkeley, honestly, because of the prestige. Yes, it's not an Ivy, but it is a really amazing public university, and throughout this video, I will be telling you about all those amazing things that do come along with being a public university and being such a large, diverse student body group. We have amazing professors and amazing research opportunities, which... Um, on, obviously kind of comes hand in hand with being pre-med, but with that said, it doesn't mean that you have to do research as a pre-med student. Kind of along with that, like you will be meeting amazing professors who are going to be up there in a lecture hall teaching you, but even with that, it doesn't mean that just because you're a great professor and just because you've done amazing things in research doesn't always correlate to being a great teacher. And I've had quite a bit of experience with that, with having world-renowned professors and then they're up there lecturing and I'm like, what? Like, what's going on? A lot of people say that research is really hard to find. Um, I will say that, like I just mentioned, it is all about perseverance and it is really possible to get those research opportunities as long as you take the time and effort to go and reach out to the professors. Obviously nothing comes easy and I don't think that's a true statement at all at Cal, but I know that's one of my bullets later on. Okay, pro number two is the geographic location. If you guys haven't visited, um, it is really close to San Francisco. It's kind of in the heart of the Bay Area. All we have to do is take the BART, which is kind of like the subway, and you're, you're gonna be there in maybe 30, 40 minutes. Or you can take public transportation via the bus, which is called the AC Transit Bus. That's free and it's covered via your tuition. So you just catch the bus and you'll be on your way to San Francisco. I wouldn't say that I go to the city that often because uh, school does kind of envelop me a lot of the times, but sometimes acclimating is a little bit rough But if you can get a group of friends to go explore the Berkeley area There's so many things to do so many food places Museums hiking trails and then obviously you can always go into the city and get some cute Instagram pics tip number three so yes, we are stigmatized as that UC campus that just has a lot of depressing students and whatnot, but I actually think one of the pros to being at the school is how huge the campus is and I actually do think that we have such a diverse campus in terms of building styles so you can be at one end of the campus and feel like you're in grind mode where you're gonna be studying 24 7 and then you can go to the other end of the campus and honestly just feel like you're not even on the UC Berkeley campus anymore which can be like a pro or a con because I feel like at a lot of different universities you're kind of in this one bubble. All the buildings are very similar in architecture, but I kind of like that that Berkeley isn't like that. We have like 30 something libraries on campus, all with their own little niche and of types of people, which is honestly kind of funny, but a lot of people end up choosing one that they really like and they end up sticking there. Or you're someone kind of like me who likes to bounce around, but still has a pocket of libraries that I like to go to. Another really great thing about the UC Berkeley campus, obviously I can't speak for a lot of the other campuses, is when the day is really nice, sadly that's not too often, but I'm trying to be as honest as I can. When the weather is nice, you will see tons of students on the Glade, which is this area on kind of at the in the middle of campus where there's a lot of grass and it's kind of surrounded by all the different libraries. And I'm sure when you guys Google UC Berkeley, it's pretty much that like one, you know, that one image that is always portrayed and comes to mind whenever I think of UC Berkeley. But yeah, you guys can find a ton of pictures on there, but it's really nice to sometimes go out and walk to class and pass through the glade and see how many students are out there just sunbathing or with their friends playing frisbee or football or like some, I don't know, club sports that we have on campus like Quidditch or ultimate frisbee, or you're just chilling and eating lunch or studying on your laptop or listening to some music. It's really nice and it really does make you feel like you're on a college campus and it kind of gives you that like homey vibe 
which I really enjoy and really love about the campus. Friend number four is the diversity. Like I mentioned at the beginning, um, we are a public university, number one public university, but you know, I don't know what UCLA is up to. Um, I'm sure a lot of the other UC campuses are like that. Within every single um, background, we do have a large population of students. So it just gives you more opportunities to meet people who have such a diverse range of backgrounds, whether that means, you know, path to UC Berkeley, cultures, religions, political backgrounds. It just really facilitates a conversation, which I really enjoy. Some of the greatest conversations that I've had really did um, come when I was in, when I was a freshman in the dorms, and that's primarily because you are placed you know, in a room, on a floor with people that you've never met who aren't your major. And honestly, I think that that's what college is about, is about meeting people, new people who maybe you wouldn't have met otherwise. It's been very eye-opening to meet people who aren't the same as me, and I, I think that's really key almost to being a doctor, is kind of getting exposure to people who aren't like you and to see firsthand what that can do to you, um, how that maybe has been a detriment to you. College is just about growing and learning, not just academically, but socially, physically, mentally. And this is kind of weaves its way into your life, whether you like it or not. But I, I think it's really great because I would hate to be a doctor later on and kind of have been oblivious to all this stuff throughout my life. So I see that as a pro. Okay, and lastly, I honestly, um, when I first decided to go to UC Berkeley, I didn't really do that much re research about it. Probably the most I research that I did was kind of looking into every major that I maybe could see myself pursuing. Cal is literally number one for so many different majors. Yeah, like maybe that's why the school is so difficult because we are so competitive across all boards and all departments. If I came in thinking that I was going to be a bio major and then decided that I wanted to switch to a business major or media studies or communications or computer science, data science, um, I knew that I had um, the best professors in all of those different departments and that no matter what I did, I couldn't really, there would be no downside to changing majors. And I feel like if you go to school that maybe you think has a great physics program, but then halfway through think that you don't want to be a physics major anymore and end up being a math major, but then that math department sucks at that school. That's not an issue at Cal. And I know so many people who have jumped around with their majors, and honestly I feel like it's because we are so great at so many of these departments that kind of give students the freedom to do that. And like I said, I'm a big supporter of you kind of coming into college and really getting to experience the breadth of knowledge that's here. So with that said, I feel like having such a broad range of curriculum that is top notch really gives you the freedom to do that. Um, you can honestly just join a club and see if that is the lifestyle or are those the people that you like to associate with. I know that sounds really weird, but you are a product of your environment and Sometimes having people that you really love within a major can almost change what you like. But yeah, like if I wanted to be a business major but didn't really know if I wanted to go and take all the econ classes um, before I got into Haas or, you know, if I got into Haas. But obviously if I get into that club and then I realize that I do have a passion for it, I feel like it will give me more footing and a solid ground for me to be like, okay, this is what I want to do. Okay, moving on to cons. I messaged a lot of my friends to kind of get a holistic view. Obviously my experience can deviate from other students. Sadly, I feel like everyone's cons list was like twice or three times as long as their pros list. And it kind of all revolves around this one golden idea, which is competition at UC Berkeley. But I tried to pinpoint five key ideas um, to really explain why the campus is the way it is. Okay, so con number one would be the competitiveness of opportunities, basically in relation to clubs. Uh, like I said, you have to go through multiple rounds of interviews, um, a lot of in-person interviews, coffee chats with people in the club, um, just because a lot of the clubs are capped um, at a certain number of students, which can be I don't know, it just kind of sucks because it feels like, you know, you fought your way to get to UC Berkeley and you have to consistently be fighting even to, you know, just get into a club here. Just to be like interested in something and want to like showcase how interested you are or devote your time to something. You know, talking to friends, I definitely don't think the culture here is normal. 
like when we talk when we talk to each other it's not so much about our lives rather it's about our stress so it's always kind of like a competition between who's more stressed and I feel like that's not what college should be about. Um, okay, con number two is constantly feeling like we need to prove ourselves to others. You listen to what other people are achieving and you feel like you need to gloat about it or you kind of need to talk about it. Listen to what other people are doing, but also make sure you stay true to yourself and do what you want to be doing and what you enjoy doing. You're proud of them and maybe that gives you that driving force to go and go after what you guys want to do. The third con is honestly support. I feel like support at the school doesn't really come that easily when it comes to those really difficult weird classes. We call them GSIs, um, which stands for graduate student instructors who basically lead the discussions. I know that they work really hard to make sure that your quizzes, your homeworks, you know, are graded on time. They make sure to summarize the lectures to a level of understanding so that we can understand them. It's wrong of me to say that support's not there, but I think in comparison to a lot of the other schools, it is really lacking. It goes really well into my fourth con, which is I have really mixed feelings um, about the support offered by an advisors in particular, um, specifically for the bio department. I truly feel like the advisors just don't give a damn. Um, and it kind of, it like really makes me sad to say that because a lot of the students within the bio department really do need that help when it comes to pre-med advice. They're not available for up to three weeks at a time. Like my sophomore year, I went to an advisor and I was like, these, these are the classes that I want to take. Um, and this, um, this is what students are telling me and I want to get your advice. Um, and it was these, there were these two genetics classes that I needed to take. And I kind of went to her and obviously all the students told me to take the non-genetics major class. But I went to my advisor and I asked her and she was like, you know, it's possible that... Um, I don't even remember what she said. But she gave me some like really BS answer. I was like, is it true that one of them is harder than the other? Um, and she was like, no, I just think one of them, the easier one obviously just filled up faster. Shouldn't your job be to like get me through college as smoothly as possible rather than, you know, covering things up or kind of sending me down the wrong path? And then on the other hand, my public health advisors are really awesome and I feel like they really give you the time of day, like getting an appointment super easy. Email them, they'll actually respond. Very unique situation with regards to wanting to petition out of a class. The advisor was amazing and she like really worked with me and she was like my advocate throughout the whole thing which I feel like it just like really gives you a sense of like wow she actually cares like I actually mean something versus like the bio department just I, mean, I, don't, I feel like they're just kind of all like you know run along and figure it out yourself. The fifth con you know save the best for last is obviously grade deflation um, you know, I really hate talking about this because I'm sure a lot of schools have grade deflation or something of the sort, but like, I don't know what it is, but like, Berkeley really just, I don't know, they like really make life hard. Like, I do think that anyone can do well in a class, but it just comes down to a matter of study habits. A lot of people put in the time and the effort and sometimes it just doesn't work out. And that might be because you're not studying efficiently and that's something that you kind of need to figure out throughout your college journey. You know, I would strongly recommend just like giving all these different variations a shot, like study in hour increments, study in 20 minute increments. But obviously with that said, um, I really do love Cal and I wouldn't have changed a thing about the school. I think it makes you a really independent person. Um, and I'm sure that you, that's the case for any school you go to, but I truly feel like Berkeley puts you through the ringer in terms of academic course load, um, how difficult your classes are. And I feel like because it's so competitive, it really gets you in the whole internship realm really early. It gets you up and out and going, which I don't, I, I truly don't think is a thing at a lot of the different schools. Um, so yeah, competition sucks, but you know, hopefully it like pays off in the long run. Um, but just make sure that you come in with the right mindset because if you come in already thinking you're gonna fail then you might fail so yes it's a hard school and I'm not gonna sugarcoat that but I just think that there can be that light at the end of the tunnel even if you do decide to pursue pre-med and there are tons of people who have and have gotten to amazing med schools and at the end of the day that's all that matters okay so that's it um, 
I hope you guys enjoyed the video, so just like, comment, and subscribe. Um, leave me a comment down below, um, and I can't wait to see you guys in the fall. Bye!